children warmly welcome to our guru gedar educational program today i am going to teach you another important lesson in our grade 6 science syllabus that is the unit 8 electricity for a comfortable life right let's move to the lesson electricity for a comfortable life when you hear this you can understand that what is electricity and how it is important for our life and how can we use this electricity to do our day-to-day -day activities easier. Right. My dear children, when you move about this topic, you can understand that today most of the activities are done by electricity. Because in this moment also, in, even in this period also, we record these lessons, online classes, all those things maintained because of the electricity, right. But what do you think about our ancient people? Did they use electricity? No. Ancient people, they mostly used their own energy sources. For example, mostly they used their manpower. They used various forms of simple energy sources, right. Let's learn some examples here. Here, how did our ancestors cook food? They used a firewood hearth for cooking purposes. And also, they used their own hand for washing clothes. You can understand that. When you think about studying purposes, ancient people still, I can remember, when I was in grade 6, I studied by using a kerosene oil lamp. You can see that earlier ancient students, they used kerosene oil lamp, sometimes candles like this. Think about another example, transportation. For the transportation purposes, ancient people used bull carts, sometimes food bicycles, sometimes on food because there were no vehicles like today. Okay? That means you can understand how ancient people did their activities by using their manpower. These pictures show you some examples. What are they? Pounding. Pounding various seeds. They used an instrument called mortar and pestle. Right. And also grinding purposes. How did our ancestors grind seeds, chilies? They used a grinding stone for this purpose. Right. This picture show you some other examples here. First one, I think you are familiar with this one. This is called as what? We know in paddy. When you go to the paddy field, we obtain paddy. But you know that. The paddy consists of good seeds as well as chaff seeds. In that case, farmers wanted to separate these good seeds from the chaff seeds. In that case, they used the winnowing paddy. They used the technique called winnowing paddy. Here they used a winnowing fan for these purposes. They got the energy by using the natural wind, normal wind power. And think about drawing water from a well. Those days, we did not have water pumps. Ancient people, what did they do is, they used a pulley and a rope, attached the rope to the basket and they put the basket into the well and draw back water. This is also they did by using their manpower. Here, today we use various forms of energy sources. Even today we use. Can you think, uh, think about some energy sources that we use today? Right. As shown in this diagram, you can watch that. We use heat energy, wind energy, magnetism, water, fuel, nuclear power. Those are the different forms of energy that we use today. Okay? Right. Among the energy sources 
electricity has become the most important and most essential source of energy. My dear children, the importance of electricity is indesirable. Right. Now, let's focus on the change. What has happened today? Think about the previous examples and what do we do these things today? Here, in ancient time, we used a firewood hearth for cooking purposes. Here we used firewood or coconut shells or whatever the fuel. Oh. But today we used a rice cooker or hot plate or electric cookers, ovens. That is the change that has happened during this change of the period. As I told you earlier, as you learned earlier, my dear children, you can remember those days our grandparents, they washed their clothes by using their own hand, by spending energy. But today, we don't want to wash clothes by using their own hand. Why is that? Each and every house, they use a washing machine. It's very easy. Take some clothes, put into the washing machine, just wash with the help of electricity right that means through these examples you can understand how electricity has influenced on our life and also you can understand that it has become the most essential and most important source of energy in our day-to-day -day life activities okay so let's focus our attention on some of the other users of electricity not only for these things Look at these things here. To study purposes, we use a lamp here. We use a lamp here. For the transportation purposes, today we use cars, which is operated by electricity. We call them as what? Electric cars. There are some different types of cars. And the change at present for these instances, those days we used mortar and pestle to pound the seeds and we used grinding stone to make chili paste and for other grinding activities. But today we don't have to waste our energy, we don't have to waste our manpower. Just switching on the blender, we can grind whatever the things that we need. We can grind. We can blend, we can make a fruit juice. All those things can be done easily with the help of electricity. I hope that you all use electricity in your homes to do these activities. This is another example that we learned earlier, right? Earlier, what did we do? We used the winnowing fan for the purpose of winnowing paddy. Nowadays, I couldn't remember. We use winnowing fan and we got the natural wind energy for this purpose. Nowadays, we don't wait whether there is wind or not. Just we switch on the fan, we haul the paddy over the fan with the help of this energy. Easily and quickly, we can separate the good seeds from chaff seeds. Right. For separating paddy, we can use uh, standing fan, but that is not that much good because there is another advanced instruments, advanced equipments for these purposes. But in rural areas, in village areas, if we couldn't find such an instrument, in that case, we can do that. We can obtain the wind by, uh, instead of natural wind, we can obtain the wind by standing fan. Okay, this is also operated by electricity, right? When you think about the second picture, as I told you earlier, we have to uh, use a rope, a pulley, and also a basket to get water from a well. It's a very difficult task and hard working activity. Uh, but nowadays, what has happened? Nowadays, I think uh, you don't use the simple technique to draw water from a well. Then what do we do? As shown in this diagram, we just 
use an electric water pump and we just switch on that when switching on what happen automatically water enters to the water tank here it's very simple activity we don't want to spend our energy in the purpose of drawing water from the well right let's move to some other examples this picture shows you some of the examples that we used today with the help of electricity what are they the first diagram shows you an air conditioner second diagram shows you a telephone machine these are only few examples not only in air conditioners not only in the uh, telephone machine we use electricity for most of the activities in our daily life only few of the examples are given here to get small idea about the use of electricity these are also some other examples dear children you can understand that here the television ah in this moment also you are watching this program because of your television so television is operated by the help of electricity if there is no electricity today you will not be able to watch this program right next example this shows you what is this instrument what is this instrument ah this is called as vacuum cleaner do you know that vacuum cleaner is used to remove the dust particles and other waste materials in the surrounding environment next diagram next picture shows you a laptop or the computer you all know my dear children how computer helps to do our day to day activities we type letters we arrange programs we study we communicate with the foreign countries internet facility we send emails all those things are done by the help of computer for the operation of all these instruments electricity is very much important so through all these examples you could understand that electricity is extremely important and essential source of energy to do our life to do our day to day activities easier now we studied about the uses of electricity and how it makes our life more and more comfortable then let's move how can we generate electricity do you know we should know how to produce electricity right then we are going to study my dear children how to generate electricity you can watch do we use a single method to generate electricity what do you think about do we use a single method to generate electricity let's learn how to obtain electricity to operate these appliances my dear children you all have a wall clock in your houses so how to obtain electricity to operate the wall clock you all have seen that we use a dry cell to obtain the electricity for the wall clock and when you think about the stand in fan not only stand in fan or most of the appliances in our house television refrigerator t uh, computer washing machine all these appliances are operated with the help of electricity that we obtain from the national grid supply what is meant by grid supply the electricity produced by the power stations main power supply next one the third picture shows you an electric bulb so this bulb is light in with the help of sunlight here what have we used here a solar panel is used that means you can understand electricity is not produced by the same manner there are different methods by a battery power supply solar panel let's move to the methods this picture shows you some examples of generating electricity first one chemical cells second one power houses third one solar panels 
these are the three main methods of generating electricity. There are three main methods. What are they? Chemical cells, coil and a magnet using solar power. Right. Chemical cells, cells that are used to generate electricity using chemicals are called as chemical cells. When you hear about chemicals, you may wonder how electricity is produced by using chemicals. Yes, let us do a simple activity to find out the generation of electricity using chemicals. Do you know my dear children, the batteries, these examples show you the way of generating electricity using chemical cells. Let us do this activity. Generation of electricity using a lime fruit. What do you think about? Are you sure? Can we generate electricity using a lime fruit? Right. Let us do an activity. How to find the electricity using a lime fruit? These are the materials needed to do the activity. First of all, we have to use a lime fruit. You all know that. In our houses, we use lime fruit to taste food and to make juices. Right, a piece of copper. A piece of zinc. Two conducting wires. And a center zero galvanometer. Do you know, my dear children, the center zero galvanometer is used to find the direction of current as well as to measure small amount of current. Right. Let us do the activity. You can watch. First, we can take the knife and make two cuts closer to each other. And then we have to use the piece of zinc we have to dip in the lime fruit. Then we have to dip the piece of copper in the lime fruit. Then we have to connect the center zero galvanometer to the lime fruit. another conducting wire to the copper. Now, you can watch that the deflection of the galvanometer takes place. The deflection of the galvanometer takes place because of the flow in of current. That means, you all can understand that electricity can be generated by using a simple lime fruit and a copper rod than a Sink rot. Dear children, you could observe that a deflection of the galvanometer took place. Why is that? You all know that the deflection of the galvanometer takes place only due to the flow of current. That means you can clearly understand electricity has produced in the lime fruit which passes through the galvanometer and this conducting wires. This is called as lime fruit cell. You all can make this at home when you are free. It is very simple and enjoyable activity. Right, my dear children. Let us move to the next example. Right. Here, you can understand that we produce electricity using a lime fruit. Okay. But we use only a single lime fruit. If we use more than one lime fruit as shown in this diagram, one, two, three. If you use three lime fruits by connecting them together as a single line, what will happen? Earlier, we could obtain only a very small amount of current. But if we use several lime fruits together as a same line, we will be able to obtain more current. Then you can understand 
more light input cells, more current, higher brightness. But I want to say you very important thing. As I told you in the beginning, we use lime fruit for tasting food, for making juices, lime juices. But keep in mind, never forget, don't taste the lime fruits that is used for the activity. Why do I say so? Because when doing the lime fruit for this activity, the lime fruit react with the zinc and copper or those are chemicals. So, eating the lime fruit after the reaction is highly poisonous. Let us move to the another activity. How to make a simple cell? You have heard about simple cell. It is given in your textbook. First of all, I would like to show you the materials required to make this simple cell. Here, I have used a copper rod. I have used a copper rod, then I used a zinc rod, then I use conducting wires with clips and I used another acid in the laboratory which is called as dilute sulfuric acid. This is very important to keep in mind, this acid is highly poisonous. So, you, when you engage in this activity, you have to work with care and you have to get the help of the teacher, right. Then I have already attached the piece of copper and piece of zinc into this sheet, then it is easier for us to do the activity, right. Let us do the activity and let us try to find how to produce current using a simple cell. First of all, I attach the clips to the zinc rod and copper rod and I used, I am going to dip these two rods in the container. Then what can you observe? You can observe the bulb is glowing. Draw your attention, the bulb is glowing and also you can see bubbles produce, air bubbles are evolved in at the bottom of zinc rod. Now, bulb is still glowing, but there is only very small brightness. The little brightness is due to the production of small amount of current. And also, if you observe very carefully, you can see that the zinc plate is gradually dissolving. So, this is called a simple cell, very simple cell. Do you know my dear children, <coughs> who discovered this simple cell? This was discovered by Alexandra Volta. As a result, as an honor for him, we call this as Volta cell, right. Now, we can watch a video to get a better understanding about the function of simple cell. Now, let us watch that video. You can watch my dear children, as we did earlier, we took copper rod, a zinc rod, dilute sulfuric acid to a beaker, right. Then you can observe the flow of current here. Copper rod is the positive terminal, zinc rod is the negative terminal. So, current flows from copper rod to the zinc rod through the external conductor and the wire. The bulb is glowing. The zinc rod is called the negative terminal. Right, my dear children, let us learn the weaknesses of simple cell. What do you think? It is called as cell, a chemical cell. We can generate electricity by using the copper rod and zinc rod, dilute sulfuric acid. It is okay, but is it good? Is it comfortable for us? No, there are a lot of weaknesses. What do you think about? When you think about the simple cell 
as I told you earlier, it consists of highly poisonous acids. What is the name of that acid? Dilute sulfuric acid. If it fall on your skin, there may be irritations, there may be damages on your body. That is why I told you earlier, we have to handle this acid very carefully. Okay. So, first weakness is, you could observe it produced only a very small amount of current. Why do I say so? The brightness of the bulb was very low. And also, second weakness, rapid dissolving of zinc plate. As I told you earlier, if we continuously keep the piece of zinc and copper inside this dilute sulfuric acid, what will happen? The zinc rod will dissolve little by little. It will add to the solution. That is why we could observe the evolution of gas bubbles here. There are weaknesses we were talking, producing only a very little amount of current, rapid dissolving of zinc plate and third weakness is the most important weakness. What is that? Difficult to transport from one place to another place and also difficult to handle this. Why? Can we keep it in our pocket? Can we keep it in our hand? Can we transport from one place to another place? No, it is highly dangerous as the sulfuric acid is poisonous acid. So, let us move to the reason. Because of these weaknesses, scientists have done <coughs> various attempts to avoid these weaknesses. What have they done? What have done by scientists to avoid these weaknesses present in simple cell? What have they done? What do you think? Production of new cell types. They have produced various types of cells without the above weaknesses. Right. You have seen some of the cells and batteries as mentioned in this diagram. You have seen <coughs> button cells, these kind of cells can be seen in the watches, small calculators, you can see. Another example, dry cells, normally we call them as torch batteries. We use them in torch batteries, pen torches and third example shows you a mobile phone battery. Are there liquids? No liquids. Last one is also another cell that is used for our day-to-day -day activities. In cameras, we use these kind of batteries. So that means you all can understand when using these batteries, no harm. We can keep them in our pocket. We can keep them in our bag. We can transport from one place to another place. We can handle them easily and also we can obtain a considerable amount of current by using these batteries for a long period of time. These batteries produce more current for a long period of time. Right. Then we should be able to identify how to classify these cells. Do you know my dear children? All these chemical cells can be classified into two types. What are they? As shown in this diagram, you can watch primary cells and secondary cells. What are they? Primary cells and secondary cells. I am going to show you some examples for primary cells here. Primary cells consist of <coughs> button cells, dry cells, likewise. Secondary cells consist of phone batteries, vehicle batteries or we call car batteries. So I am asking, can you imagine, can you guess the difference between primary cells and secondary cells? Do you know? 
what is the main difference? These cells after using for a certain period of time, we have to dispose them, we have to throw them out to the dustbin. Why? Because of the reduction of their chemical power. Can we recharge them? No, you are sure we can't recharge these cells. But what do you think about your mobile phone battery? What do you think about the car battery? After using for certain period of time, do we dispose them? No, after reducing their power, these batteries can be recharged. Now you can understand the main difference between primary cells and secondary cells. If I ask a question, my dear children, what are called as primary cells? What will be your answer? The your answer should be primary cells are the cells that can be re that can't be recharged. Secondary cells are the cells that can be recharged. Then we can observe that how to dispose the dead batteries or the primary cells where the power reduces. Here we have to concern about the disposal of batteries that is called as proper disposal of dead batteries. Why do I say so? As we learned earlier my dear children, you can remember these dry batteries, dry cells consist of various types of chemicals. Can we throw them out to the garden? Sometimes our compound, no, small children, others may contact with these things. If we dispose them to water bodies, there may be poisonous chemicals added to the water bodies. As a result, you know that when disposed in the garbage, there are garbage cans to dispose papers, glass, plastic separately and also metals. So we must dispose them to the suitable garbage can. Now, you can remember, you can remind, I told you the main difference between primary cells and secondary cells. Tell me again, what is the difference? Although the primary cells can't be recharged, the secondary cells can be recharged. This small video explains you how to recharge our battery. After reducing their chemical power, we can recharge them and we can use over and over again. Right. We have discussed about primary cells, secondary cells, those are called as chemical cells. It is the first method of generation of electricity we learn in our grade 6 science lesson. Now let us move to the second method of generation of electricity. Can you remember? At the beginning I told you three main methods. What is the first one? <coughs> chemical cells. Second one, solar cells. Third one, coil and a magnet. Right. When we think about, when we draw attention on the generation of electricity by using a solar power, you can watch this video. Here, sunlight falls on a solar cell, solar panel, which is fixed on the rooftop. It produces electricity it passes through the house. So, I would like to tell you something, the difference between solar cell and solar panel. Normally, my dear children, a solar cell is a single cell. Solar panel is made by joining, by combining thousands of solar cells. Because a solar cell produces only a very small amount of current. As a result, we have to combine large number of solar cells to produce this kind of a large solar panel. Then we can obtain higher quantity of current. Right. Now, when you think about the 
solar cells, solar panels, you can draw your attention. Where we use solar panels? Where we use solar cells? Think about what are the instances that we use solar power? You have seen, we use the solar panels in calculators, toys, aeroplanes, satellites. Now think about satellite. When you go to upper space, can we carry an electric cable from the ground? No. In the upper space, there are satellites. Those satellites receive sunlight and generate electricity and they use that electricity for the operation of the satellite. And also I have seen some of the scientists have prepared vehicles operated by solar panels. There are solar cars, solar vehicles and also we can use the solar energy to do our day to day activities. If we want, we can use the solar energy to heat water. Not only that, if there is sufficient amount of solar energy, we can use the solar energy for our day to day activities and excess amount we can sell or supply to the power stations. Then we can have additional income. Right. Let us move to the third method of generation of electricity. What is that? Generation of electricity using the coil and a magnet. Who discovered this principle? This was discovered by a famous scientist called Michael Faraday. We have to respect him. Why is that? Today we all use electricity because of the principle, because of the process discovered by Michael Faraday, which is using the coil and a magnet. Here, as I told you earlier, as you watched earlier, we have to draw attention on the center zero galvanometer. You can remember, tell me, what are the users of center zero galvanometer? For what do we use center zero galvanometer? Do you know, my dear children? We use a center zero galvanometer to measure the amount of current and also to find the direction of current. This is the diagram. When current flows to one direction, the indicator deflects to left side. The current flows to the opposite direction, indicator deflects to right side. So, this is how we find the direction of current. This shows you the generation of electricity by using the coil and a magnet. I will do a simple activity to practically understand this phenomenon. Here to do this activity, we want to use a magnet. It may be a bar magnet, you know that a magnet consists of north pole and a south pole. Then we have to prepare a coil. How can we prepare a coil? We can take a copper wire and we can wind it around a PVC tube and we can, then we can prepare a coil. Then I have already prepared a coil around the PVC pipe. I have connected the two ends of the coil to the center zero galvanometer. Now I am going to move this magnet. You can draw attention on the center zero galvanometer and you can watch the, you can watch what is happening now. When moving this inside, you can see that the center zero galvanometer is deflecting to either sides. But if I keep this inside that, no movement there take out no movement, but there should be a continuous motion then only it generates electricity. The deflection of galvanometer means 
the generation of electricity. My dear children, here did I use any battery? Did I use any chemical cell? Did I use any solar panel? No. Here I use only a coil and a magnet to generate electricity. Right. Now, let us move to the next activity. Right, my dear children, I am going to show you another important activity for further understanding of the generation of electricity using the coil and magnet. Actually, this is the technique takes place in the all power stations. I have used here a wheel and also there is a coil and magnet. I am going to rotate this wheel. You can watch that. When rotating the wheel quickly, the bulb, the LED is lighting up. You can watch that, my dear children. That is because of the generation of electricity due to the rotation of the coil near a magnet. Now, let us move to the next slide. You can watch that here. Electricity can be generated by moving a magnet near a coil. Here what do we do? We move a magnet near a coil. Here also we can produce electricity. This activity shows you the generation of electricity by moving a coil near a magnet. As I did earlier, the coil is rotating in between the magnet so, electricity is generated. This is called as electromagnetic induction. Now, let us watch another video for the further understanding of the principle with the help of a dynamo. My dear children, you have heard about the dynamo. <coughs> we used a dynamo in bicycles to generate electricity. Those days, they used ancient people. You can watch the parts of the dynamo. <coughs> the dynamo consists of a coil and a magnet and there are two conducting wires. The inner part, the magnet rotates closer to a coil. Here the magnet rotates because of this rotation wheel. There is a wheel here. The wheel is attached to the bicycle trim. You can watch that. This shows that when the magnet rotates near the coil, the electricity is generated. This electricity is used to glow the headlight of the bicycle. Then let us focus our attention on the generation of electricity in hydropower station. You can watch that. When water flows down through this tunnel, there is a turbine, the turbine rotates. When the turbine rotates, there is a large magnet, the magnet rotates. Because of the rotation of this magnet, electricity is generated and supplied through the cables. Now, this diagram shows you a wind power station. In wind power stations also, same process, same technique takes place. What is the process? moving a magnet near a coil or moving a coil near a magnet. Here, the wind turbine is rotated with the help of wind. That is the only difference here. Now, <coughs> let us move to the coal power station. We call this as a thermal power station. In thermal power station, coal is used as the fuel. When burning fuel, water gets heated and water gets evaporated at the boiler, steam is produced. The steam passes through the tube. Because of the steam, the turbine rotates. As a result, the generator produces current. That is the process that takes place in coal power station and all other thermal power stations. The remove exhaust gas is given out from the This diagram shows you the process and the function of nuclear power station. Do you know my dear children? Nuclear 
energy is used here, same process, nuclear energy is used to boil water, steam is produced, so produced steam is used to rotate the turbine and generate electricity. Here, pictures given below are few uh, traditional equipments used by ancient people. What are the modern equipments that we use today? Because we have come to the end of the lesson, we have studied lot of things here. Right, tell me the answer. What do we use for this today? This is called as sequa. It was used for extracting oil. Nowadays, we use oil extracting machine. This is the ancient method of baking bread and cake. Nowadays, we use an electric oven. Here, ancient instrument. Nowadays, we used a grinder. <coughs> this is ancient method of sawing wood. Nowadays, we use an electric saw. This is called a coconut shell iron. Those days, ancient people used burnt coconut shells in the purpose of ironing clothes. Now, <coughs> there are some questions here. Select the correct answer from the brackets. What do you think about? Blank. Producers when falling light on solar cells. What is the answer? Producers when falling light on solar cells. Answer is electricity. Because we learn electricity producers when falling light on solar cells. Second question blank can be recharged when its chemical power reduces. Which cells can be recharged? Primary cells or secondary cells? What is the answer? Secondary cells can be recharged. Next one, a blank power station is located at Puttalam. So, which power station is located at Puttalam? What is the answer? Thermal power station, no hydro power station. The answer is thermal power station. Right, my dear children, we have studied lot of things regarding the electricity for a comfortable life, unit 8 of grade 6 science syllabus. Now, I am going to summarize our lessons. Ancient people mostly used their manpower to do their day to day activities. Today, we all use electricity to make our task easier. We learned that methods of generating electricity. What are they? Generation of electricity used in a lime cell, generation of electricity used in a chemical cell, generation of electricity used in a coil and a magnet. Finally, we learn generation of electricity using solar panels and power stations. My dear students, this is the end of our lesson. Today, I hope that you all have enjoyed the lesson. You learn all the information relevant to the unit 8 of grade 6 science syllabus, electricity for a comfortable life. I invite you, please refer to the textbook and make further clarifications answer past paper questions and if you want you can watch this again and again through channel nie youtube i think this is the end of lesson have a nice day